Uh, we're now making our way to a very famous battlefield in Scottish history. This was the Battle of Preston Pans, 1745. Now you'll remember in Outlander, this is where the Jacobites first square up with the English army and defeat the English army. Now this battle was quite complex, so, so I'm going to narrate this afterwards because there's a lot of dates, facts and figures in here which I can't remember offhand. Now walking up this man-made hill to mark the centre of the Battle of Preston Pans, you soon get a scale of the battlefield. In series 2 of episode 10 you'll find Jamie and the rest of the clan in the field at Preston Pans, just outside Edinburgh. Scanning the area, you soon see that the Scots were encamped on the high ground. How the English chose this spot is beyond me. Walking in the field you get a sense of slaughter awaiting the English. The real battle took place at 4am in the morning on the 21st of September 1945, led by Charles Edward Stuart. So this is where the Scottish clan forces amassed. And in the middle here is where the boggy ground was. This is where I'm standing now. British troops were amassed down there. They're just standing the road up quickly. During this episode, it became clear to Jamie that the terrain was too boggy to risk. Now, if you've ever crossed one of these boggy fields, you'll soon realize that it's almost impossible to move with any speed across them. It was in fact the local lad that showed the Scottish clans how to cross the boggy terrain. Now, in truth, it was actually the Scottish weather that placed the final nail in the English coffin. The morning of the battle, a thick fog rolled in from the first the large river estuary that runs up past Edinburgh. You literally cannot see your hands in front of you. The Scottish attacked the English from their flank in the thick fog, giving the English very little time to fire on the, the charging Scottish. The final result of this was that approximately 50 Scots were killed and almost 500 English were killed in the battle. And uh, that's the monument behind us. That's the marker to where the Jacobites and the English squared off between the two fields. That used to be bog land and we tried to fly the drone but the wind was so strong we couldn't get the drone off the ground. It was very windy. So we're now at Trinan Churchyard. On the afternoon of September the 20th, the day before the battle, the Jacobites seized the high ground around Trinant and the church that you see now. Looking down the hill, they saw the British army of Sir John Cope. Now, unlike the Jacobites, this army had cannons and cavalry. Cope had first been facing forward towards Edinburgh, that you see in the distance there. He then turned his army to look south towards where we are standing now at the church. And further down the slope is an impossible bog. It was a big drainage field that passed right through the middle of the fields. It was called the Trinant Meadows. And this was lined with deep drainage ditches that prevented the Jacobites from attacking them. And that's why the English felt safe there. Interesting inscription on this gravestone. They are not dead, they are sleeping. Now one of the Jacobite officers, who was called O'Sullivan I believed, he placed some of the Cameron Highlanders in the churchyard that we are now walking around in. The strong uh, walls made this a very good defence position. Unfortunately a British patrol came down and too close to where this group of men were stationed behind the churchyard. Cope decided on seeing these men to fire on them with his cannons. Now several of the Highlanders were wounded and they withdrew from the churchyard. Uh, Cope also fired mortars into Trinant, into the area during the night, but uh, luckily for the Scots, these fuses failed to explode. Now this church has been rebuilt several times, but the original walls still stand. Uh, the building you see in front of you is Bankton House. It's very close to the battlefield. Um, a senior royal commander, Colonel James Gardner, was actually stationed there. Now, he was mortally wounded in one of the final skirmishes that took place around this area. He was taken up to the church manse where he died later. Now, in this particular series, the catchphrase, Mark Me, I think it should become a registered trademark of Prince Charlie. 
He uses it so many times during this episode and in previous episodes. I'm telling you, that is one of the catchphrases that drove me completely crazy. But it seems in history that this was the idiot that was responsible for screwing up Scottish history.